board. Well, welcome back to the channel again. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about why I like to do 3D printing for my buildings and my things I design. Even in my robotics, I did this. I like printing flat. And what I mean by printing flat is, I mean, it's like, it's like the old days. And Monogram, Revel, I'm sure if you guys are old enough, you probably remember those days. We have the um, mold-injected parts. And then you pull them off the tree with a pair of spruces or, you know, nippers. And then you, before you, at, before you, before you put them together, you would spray paint them while they were on the tree. And then sometimes you would touch them up and then sand them down with files. And you got some really nice looking models, uh, cars, planes, uh, ships, all kinds of cool stuff. And I thought to myself, why are we going into full body prints where we don't build them anymore, but they're just like, print it out. And I know from experience, and you may agree with me on this or not, but that when you print a full object, whether it be a robot body or something like that, you're going to have supports. And if you don't have the supports in the right place, whether it be resin or uh, PLA, it's going to create sagging. A line can only handle so much heat and so much distance before it's going to sag. I've seen a lot of these buildings where people just don't care sometimes, and they just go ahead and just print them out, beautiful, everything else and don't really care about the sagging or the extra stuff. And then here's the other thing I want to bring up. You ever realize how hard it is to take something that's fully assembled, come in there, kind of like a statue, player, uh, like you used to call them plaster of Paris, and you used to take these paints and you'd paint them, and then you'd stain them, and then you put clear on them, and they'd make like nice statues and for lamps and bowls and things like that. And they, they were real popular back in the 60s. Everybody bought them and they painted them. Some people were really good at their artwork and they blended in and stuff like that. And some people just got the outline done and they were happy with that. Some people gold gilded them and everything else. Well, it's kind of the same way when you take a full building, whether it's 3D printed or resin printing, you got to go in with some really fine brushes and make sure you're painting it very, very detailed. You need to be pretty doggone good at your painting. Well, here's the cool thing about printing flat. I have found that Rust-Oleum sticks to PLA really good. It bonds like a really good agent. You don't have to worry about sanding and cleaning up and all that stuff. If you spray your flat PLA parts first with Rust-Oleum, like a base coat, and then come in and then assemble them, and the Rust-Oleum seems to react to the CA in such a way that it acts like a catalyst. That it actually makes it stick better, I have found. And you don't have to scrape it clear like in the old days where you had to scrape the paint away from the model after you painted it, like in the Revels and the monograms. But you had a really good bond with that CA glue, especially with PLA. And if you had an activator to it, it even works even better. So I have found that I got really good detail. I was able to spray paint all my windows, all my walls, all my trims and all my roofs, come in with my washes, like I'm doing on the power plant station like I did on an NNW Freight Depot. And that's where I'm getting the realism. That's where I'm getting the detail. That's where I'm getting the ability to really make that model look almost alive. And that's why I like printing flat. And that's another good thing about printing flat is, is that it's, it's low profile. It's not a big, huge billion to worry about it breaking or anything like that. It goes into a little bag and you put it together. And it, you're proud of it because you put it together. I also, being an inventor and having the access to inventor, I'm able to create some really good detailed directions, step-by-step -step things with pictures and everything else. So when I build a building, I take the prototype that I make, and then I go ahead and I test print it. I make sure all the windows fit first and everything like I showed you in other videos. And then once I get that built, then I build it myself. Once I know how it goes together, I go back and I build the directions and I and design them and everything else, make the pictures match. And I get a very successful building that somebody else can build, not that somebody has to just get a full printed thing. So I think it's very successful myself. What do you guys think? I mean, do you guys, I know a lot of people get into these 3D prints and they say, hey, I'm not in a designer. I'm not an inventor. Well, it, it is an art to be an inventor. It is an art to be a designer, just like a sculptor. You just don't pick that up overnight. It's a learning curve. 
And if you've done it for a career like I've done it, it's not a learning curve anymore. It's easy and it's fun. And that's why I have a passion for designing. I would rather design stuff all day than spend more time on my yard and playing with it. And that's just the truth. Now, some people would rather spend more time with their trains, getting the landscaping done and everything else and having fun with their trains and building onto it and putting more money into that than they do in the learning the programs, learning how to print and everything else. Well, let me take that burden off of you by offering you some buildings that I've already kitted and that uh, I'll put the links in below. But that's my argument why I like printing flat. And I think you, if you, if you do have a printer and if you decide to go ahead and make your own buildings and learn the program, whether it be Tinkercad or um, Fusion, Autodesk Fusion, I think it's called, 360, um, or even Mesh Mixer, you know, whatever you decide to use for your program or ZBrush, I don't know, you, I guess you could do it in ZBrush. But if you don't want to learn the program, if you don't want to do all the 3D uh, inventor and test fitting, everything else, I've already done it for you. And if you like the buildings, you can buy them as kits and put them together yourself and have a really nice looking building. It's something you'll be proud of, too. So that's my argument for why I print flat. Now, how I'm going to show you how I print flat, not really. That's just an, a video for this to tell you why I print flat why I think the buildings look better than just trying to paint a solid building. Now, I'm sure I might get some flack on this. I don't know. But I'm trying to help you design, not design, but to build something you're proud of. And that's the neat thing about model railroading, isn't it? Doing something that we did and, and being proud of it enough to show somebody else that we did it, whether it be on YouTube, social media, Instagram, or whatever. All right, so happy railroading. That's my little tidbit on why I print flat.